As I was waiting to interview you, I was looking at your tweets uh, today, actually, about Israel. And it just seemed to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seemed to me you'd suddenly decided uh, to take a much more direct and tough position. And you said this, now is the moment for Israel to return to its founding premise. The Jewish state has an absolute right to exist, a divine gift, gifted to a divine nation, charged with a divine purpose. Israel has an absolute unequivocal right and responsibility to defend itself to the fullest, applying the only language its adversaries understand, the language of force. And what would David Ben-Gurion say? Don't depend on anyone else's fleeting sympathies or permission to do it. If Israel wants to destroy Hamas, Israel should go ahead and destroy Hamas. If Israel wants to destroy Hezbollah, Israel should go ahead and destroy Hezbollah. If Israel and Mossad want to pull off Munich 2.0 and take out every last leader of Hamas, whether they're hiding from Doha to Dresden and host a red wedding at the Four Seasons in Qatar, they should go ahead and do it. Now, when I read that, I was, I was a bit taken aback because your rhetoric about Israel, I would say, before all this, back in the summer, was not as strident as this. Well, well and I'm I mean, this is in the wake of an attack. What I'm saying is the principle is the same. The U.S. should not be involved. Mm. But when the U.S. is not involved, I think that's better for the U.S. It's also better for Israel but is to be it, able to but pursue also, its own okay, national self-interest. Here's the question I'm going to ask you. It, it sounds to me like your support for Israel is they can do what the hell they like. Yes. But you want to be president of the United States. Mm -hmm. And there are many people in America, you know this, who are extremely concerned about the proportionate scale of the Israeli response already. And it's only likely to get a lot worse before anything is resolved here. Is your support for them unconditional? Because it sounds like it is. My they, support they for can... their right to national self-existence mm. and self-defense and carrying out whatever the heck they think is appropriate in response to mm. the attack submitted on them? Yes, it is not our job to get involved in this in one direction or another. Historically, it's been America's position in the world to be leader of the free world to be almost the world's global policeman. And it sounds to me, if you were to become president, what you're saying is any country can, in interests of its own self-defense, can do what the hell it likes, and you won't condemn it. Is, is there no limit to that? Well, look, I think that within the bounds of following international law, right, within mm. the bounds of the legal framework that we all abide by, Yes, it's not our job to be the global policeman. And, and I think there's a lot to what you said there, Pierce, that's true. The, historically, especially if you look at the last 25, 30, 40 years, mm. that has been the role of the United States, is to try to play this role of global cop. Well, I'm running for president of the United States of America. And my job as the U.S. president is to look after American interests. That's a shift from the neoconservative view. It's a shift from the model of liberal hegemony. And I think part of this is because I come from a different generation that has seen the costs of six and a half trillion dollars of our national debt attributable to the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan that did not advance U.S. interests. Thousands upon thousands of innocent lives sacrificed in those two wars alone. Yes, I grew up into a generation where we saw that. I reject that vision. But that means we have to practice what we preach in all directions. That means this is Israel's right to defend itself. They should be unconstrained and unrestrained. The IDF can, I believe, get its own job done. For those who would call for U.S. military involvement, I say no. My view to Iran is you stay out and we stay out, and that's something that will keep Iran out, and we stay out of it as well. But that's a different view also than saying that then I'm somehow going to second guess what decisions Israel makes. No. Israel has a right to national self defense So you don't want to help them? Not militarily. Diplomatically, I do. We have $3.8 billion in aid that's going to Israel. I don't propose cutting that off. We've made that 10-year commitment for a reason. But I think, actually, I'm not sure that that's exactly what Bibi would say. I mean, I would give you what Bibi's address to Congress was in 1996. It's also call out the unspoken truth here, Piers. One unspoken truth of those carrier groups going to the conflict area. Part of the reason they're there is also to keep, play big brother to Israel to sort of say what Israel can and can't do. Yeah, but, but you, so I say go sure. back to David Ben-Gurion's founding vision for Israel. That's what I would tell Bibi. I get that. You do what you need to okay. do. Okay, but I would say to you, the reason actually those carriers have been sent in is because it is absolutely in America's national interest what happens now in this war. Because if things were to escalate, and just before I sat down with you, I saw a statement from the, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, extremely censorious, demanding an immediate ceasefire, 
saying that they think this, this could be a, a disaster for the region. You've got President Erdogan of Turkey calling Israel overtly war criminals now in a, at a rally in, in Turkey. This is really escalating fast. It's so I think we need to de-escalate it. I don't think our military gonna presence get, there helps that. I'm going to come to how that may or may not transpire. But the idea that this is not relevant or pertinent to America's national interest is for the birds, isn't it? Well, I'm not saying that it's not relevant or pertinent what's happening in the world. My question is, does our military engagement mm. help our national interest? The United Nations uh, voted a, a motion for ceasefire in this war. The United States voted against that motion. The United Kingdom, my country, abstained. Where do you sit on that? I think the United Nations has outlived its purpose. I personally think that we should have an open conversation about the U.S.'s continued involvement in the U.N. I don't think that that should be a foregone conclusion. Really? So I, I want to be very clear about where I stand on this as someone running for U.S. president. I'm not running for president of the U.N., mm. I mean, secretary general of the U.N., whatever it is. I'm not running for president of Israel. I'm running for president of the United States of America. And my prism, and I think that this is going to be the foundation of a future that will lead to greater peace in the United States and mm. I think around the world is to be very candid that my decisions will be made through one filter. What advances the interests of the United States of America? And I don't believe that it advances the United States of America for us to assume the position of a shadow ICJ, an international court of justice, mm -hmm. deciding what is or isn't proportionate from our armchair position in Washington, D.C., when we have problems of our own and threats of our own to deal with. And so my view is, again, Pierce, this is part of the broken foreign policy establishment in both political parties. Once you've crossed that Rubicon, then yes, you're committed to take stances okay. on each of these let me, questions. Let me ask you this. As it's a, not my job to adjudicate okay. this as the U.S. president. There are the injustices in this country to most of the American people. I mean, that's a massive departure. That. that would be that a, a massive, massive departure. departure. And NATO? So NATO, I think, is a, is a different conversation from the U.N. Hmm. I do think that there's a conversation first, a table stakes conversation with NATO, when you have a majority of its members still not meeting its minimum 2%. But an American GDP. president has to have a moral compass, too. I about, do. About whatever's going on anywhere in the world. Well, I have a moral My compass. My question is this. Right now, there are thousands of children. You're a father, two young kids. I'm a father of four kids. There are thousands of young children getting killed in Gaza. Innocent Palestinian kids. Half, the, half of Gaza are kids. Women being blown to pieces. Houses and whole areas being completely decimated. A million Gazans have had to move from the north to the south out of their homes, which they will not be able to return to in most cases because they've been destroyed and they're going to be destroyed. And I get that the purpose, the Israel stated mission purpose, is to get rid of Hamas, and I agree with them. But how they do that, the whole world is watching. And the other parts of the region, including Saudi Arabia, that are on the verge of a new accord with Israel are now recoiling at what they see as a disproportionate response. So, so I disagree so, with so my some question, of that characterization. My, my question, a long-winded question, but yeah. my question is, on, on a human level, with the moral compass required by an American president, do you not look at what's happening now in Gaza and slightly recoil at the scale of this and what it may become in the next days, weeks, potentially months? Do you not think, so do you Pierce, not think let that me, let me a responsible that American president wouldn't say to uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, just hang so, on here? So, so if, I'm, if I may, Pearson, mm. I appreciate you providing the backdrop for that question. And I'm not giving you the answer. No, I know you're I'm not. I'm asking you. Yeah, and I, and I take it as a, as a question. Yeah. It's a difficult question. It's a difficult answer. I think my first obligation in the way I've lived my life to this date is to my family, mm. to those two sons, those two boys we're raising. And then we go concentric circles to my nation. I'm a citizen of this nation, not some nebulous global citizen fighting climate change nebulously somewhere else. I'm a citizen of this nation. If I'm running to lead this nation as commander in chief, I do have a moral obligation. This is my moral compass speaking. My moral compass is to the United States of America. And once we have dealt with wage stagnation and a border crisis and the people who are suffering mm. in this country, the people who are suffering for threats vulnerable to cyber attacks, super EMP attacks, nuclear missile attacks from a Russia-China alliance that poses a great threat to the United States and our citizens today. Once we've dealt with that, then maybe we can get to hunger in the Congo after that. But, this but that's the order we need to go in.